Hey, welcome back to Way of the Wrench and on today's video I'm going to be showing you everything you need to know to be able to inspect your drum brakes so you can save money and be confident the job is getting done and use this and these to be able to work on your own vehicles. Sound good? Let's go. Behind me is a 1991 Honda Civic and it has front disc brakes and if you're wanting to know how to inspect front disc brakes I have a great video I'll put the link above for that and this one has rear drum brakes so older cars tend to have drum brakes only on the rear if you get even older like pre-1970 you might even have four-wheel drum brakes so like an old muscle car or something like that uh, new stuff they are tending to go away from drum brakes uh, but you still might see them on new things like brand new tent trailers, travel trailers, kind of anything with electric brakes because it's a drum brake setup in there. So really valuable skills going forward. And to get to this point, those of you at home, you're going to have to crack the lug nuts loose while it's still on the ground and then jack the vehicle up and put it on some safety stands, be nice and safe. If you don't know how to do that, I will post a link to my video on how to jack up a car so you can go watch that first. And then you can take the wheels off and then we can do this inspection. Now for this video, I am using my hoist because it's easier for me to work and way easier for me to film and make a better video viewing experience for you. All right, so the first step is we have to take the drum off. Now you just grab the sides here and kind of wiggle as you pull and it should come off like that. Now that came off pretty easy. So let's talk about what happens when it does not want to come off. First thing you should be thinking of if you can't get this drum off is Oh yeah, I put my parking brake on and I've got the brake shoes inside grabbing the inside of the drum, not letting it go. So go back inside the car, release the parking brake, try again. That's probably what it's going to be. The next thing is a little bit harder. So the next thing it can be is that this hub has a nice machined hole right in the center and that centers itself on a slide fit uh, as it goes onto the spindle here. And what happens is these two things are stuck there for so long that they start to rust together and making it really hard to come off. So what you do is you go get your Donkey Kong style wooden mallet. Don't grab a steel hammer, otherwise you can break chunks off of your drum doing this. And all you do is you hit on the sides here and you kind of alternate from left to right to up and down. And you're just getting this thing to rock back and forth until it breaks that little rusted area up like this. and you just keep going back and forth until it frees up. Sometimes a little tap on the edges can get it to go as well, but uh, that front surface trick works the best. Now, another trick of the trade is that on some vehicles that have been really well engineered, they have added some little threaded holes here, and there's always gonna be two of them, and they're usually across from each other, so that you can thread in a metric bolt and have a nice long bolt with lots of thread in it. And all you do is you thread it down until it hits the inside and then you get a socket and a socket wrench and you just slowly kind of evenly tighten it and it will actually force the drum to come off. And then when you're done, you just take the bolts out. So it's kind of a neat thing, but I find that not every vehicle has this. Uh, I find mostly imports have this. All right, I have one more trick of the trade for you and this is the end all be all sent straight from heaven to get you out of brake hell. If you do not know how to do this, and this is your situation, you will probably end up giving up at being like, man, here, take my money, just fix this problem. But those of you that are gearheads and know about this, you're gonna be like, oh yeah, this guy knows what he's talking about. So the next situation that could be happening is that your drum brakes have been in here for a very long time. We're talking years and years and years. And the brake shoes have worn themselves into a groove inside of the drum, which makes a lip on the backside. And when you go to pull this off, it feels loose. It should come out, but it just won't. It can't come off. And all the other previous tricks won't work. So you have to actually go from the backside and there will be a little rubber plug that you remove. And then there will be a hole there. It usually looks like a round oval. And then you get a screwdriver in there with a light. And what you're looking for is kind of like a star wheel kind of shape, like a gear or a spur. And when you take your screwdriver from the backside and you lift up or down, you'll have to figure out which way. One way makes the brake shoes go out and this will start getting tight. And it'll also start feeling tighter. 
The other way will actually make the shoes come in a bit and feel loose, and that's what's going to let it get out of that groove in the drum so that you can remove it. Remember, having to get in here to do this is kind of a rare yeah, situation, but it does happen, so I thought I would talk about it. Uh, if this is not making a lot of sense to you right now, don't worry, in the future I will be doing a video on how to replace disc brakes and drum brakes, and it'll make a lot more sense then. And yet another reason why you can't get your drum off is that it has integral hubs, meaning that the drum is kind of trapped with a wheel bearing and a castle nut and a cotter pin. So if you don't know how to take that apart and put it back together, I have a great video. I'll post a link up above for it. It's on how to repack your wheel bearings. And uh, if you have to do that while you're in there, you might as well clean, inspect, and repack your wheel bearings. So it's a great video for you to watch and it'll teach you how to take it apart and put it back together. Whoo, all right, congratulations. Depending on your situation, that might've been very easy or really, really challenging, but you have finally got this off. So let's now talk about the actual inspection process. Since I have a brake drum in my hand, why don't we start with the inspection here. Now, first thing up is safety. There's going to be some brake dust in here and this stuff has been known to cause cancer. So we are not exactly wanting to snort the stuff. The best way of dealing with it is have a spray bottle full of just regular water, give it a spray down. And then that dust is not airborne anymore. It literally just runs into a muddy kind of slurry mess. And if there's a lot of it, you can spray it into a garbage can so they can get rid of it. Now, what you are looking at here is the surface. So what you're seeing here is kind of a slightly shiny kind of dull metal look. That's a normal look for a daily driver car if the brakes are working. So that's what we're looking for. If it has rust in it, that's a good indicator that on a daily driver car that the brakes are not working. So you might want to look a little bit further into the, the hydraulic system or look into the wheel cylinders. They might be frozen up. The other things you don't want to see is uh, light blues, dark blues, kind of purple tinges to that color. That's giving you an indication that the brakes are not fully releasing. And when you're driving down the car, your brakes are on, making a ton of heat, and that heat's going in, and that's what the color's about. The other thing you're going to want to look for is this should be very smooth surface. There shouldn't be any scoring or deep grooves. And at the very end here, there shouldn't really be a lip. Now, there can be a lip. Before you put it back together, why don't you take some pretty aggressive sandpaper and just knock off the lip there. Uh, that way you don't have the issue of this thing not coming off next time you go to do this. Uh, other than that, we have to inspect the diameter to see if it's actually too big. So why don't I show you how to do that? In order to be able to measure this diameter properly, we're going to have to get one of these tools. This is a drum brake caliper. It's about 40 to 50 bucks from a local auto parts store. Well worth the investment if you're doing this and saving thousands of dollars on your vehicles. Now, the way this works is you undo this little knob here, which allows this to move. And then these points we're gonna put in here to measure the diameter. Now the trick is to get the actual diameter at its biggest point. So if you can imagine if I measured here, it's gonna be less than if I got right in the center. So what you do is you kind of plant one point inside and then go like this while you pull on the other way out to help it find the absolute biggest size it can be. Make sure this is parallel with the bottom of the drum. And then what I like to do with this hand is pinch this really tight so that it, the reading doesn't change. Lock the screw down and then remove it. And then on this one, there's a little piece of white plastic here. When you look at the edge, it lines up with the reading or the measurement that you have. So in this case, we are 200 millimeters. Now the cool thing about this tool is once you have set this for the internal dimension of the drum, it actually mirrors that adjustment on the outside here of the caliper. So we can use this to measure the clearance between the drum and the brake shoes so that we can have a proper clearance in there, which is about one millimeters. So once you have your measurement, you're gonna flip the drum over and every drum on the planet in the casting, when they make this, they have a bunch of details put out here. And one of them is the maximum diameter that this can be before it is too thin and needs to be thrown out. So in this case, this one says max diameter, 201 millimeters. So we measured 200. This can be 201, which is slightly bigger. So we still got some room on here. Now, another cool thing they do in this casting is if you don't have one of those drum brake calipers, you can look at this shiny surface where the brake shoes uh, grab onto. Right at the top, there is an, a 45 degree chamfer or a little angled machine surface. And that, as long as you can still see that chamfer, technically you're still good. 
Once this gets too big, or if it's had to be machined to clean up the surface, once that chamfer is not visible anymore, that is too thin, these have to be thrown away and have to purchase a new one. Now that we have the drum off, let's do a little bit of terminology so we know what we're talking about here. So these are the brake shoes themselves. They always come in pairs. And this is essentially a steel backing plate with a little bit of structure. And there is some friction material or a brake lining that is attached to the front edge. They can be bonded, which is essentially glued to this frame, or if there's holes in these surfaces here, then that's gonna be riveted. Now, what's pushing these brake shoes out against the inside of the drum that's spinning when you're going down the road is this guy here. This is a slave cylinder, or otherwise known as a wheel cylinder. So when you push on the brake pedal, you've got hydraulic pressure that comes down in through the back and pushes two pistons in here, which pushes these shoes out against the drums, and that's what stops the car. Now, in the back side here, there are a couple springs. There's an upper return spring and a lower return spring. Their job is that once you have applied the brakes and you let off the brakes, we have to have something to bring these back. And so the upper and lower return springs bring everything back. Now there's also going to be a self-adjusting mechanism to help adjust these shoes out when they start to wear out. That way it doesn't take so long to apply the brakes when they start to get a little bit worn down. I'm not going to go into too much detail for that, but like I said, in the future I will do a full how to service drum brake video for you. Now when you're inspecting these brake shoes themselves, uh, first thing I usually do is I look at the surface here to see if there's any chunks of the friction material that's missing. Is there deep cracks? Is there any kind of burnt, weird looking burnt spots on here? Otherwise, this surface looks nice and smooth and clean, so this is okay. Uh, check the other side as well. Now the next thing I check for these brake shoes is the friction material itself and how thick it is from the backing plate to the edge of the friction material. Now, in general, they don't wear out evenly. Depends on the systems, which we'll talk about more in later videos. However, for right now, what I usually do is I check all the way along one edge and look for what the skinniest section is. Then I go to the next one and take a look for its skinniest section. And between the two, whichever is the thinnest amount of brake lining material, I will measure that with a ruler and then call that lowest measurement what this whole wheel is at. So in this case, just eyeballing it, this is about the same. It's about four mil all the way around. This is about the same as well, four mil. And then it starts to get skinnier and it looks like it goes down to about two and a half or three millimeters here. So I'm gonna measure here and call that my reading. The next thing I like to check are these wheel cylinders. And what I'm looking for is, is there an internal leak? Those cup seals have gone bad and the brake fluid is trying to escape. Now, what you see outside here are just dust boots. These are designed to keep the dust out, keep the salt water out, not designed to keep hydraulic brake fluid inside the system. That's your cup seal's job. So what we can do is we can pick those dust boots off and take a look in there and they should be dry. If they are wet with fluid in there, then that means this wheel cylinder needs to be either rebuilt or replaced. So let me show you how we check that. Okay, what I do is I take one of my fingers and I put it on the dust boot and kind of hold it down on the back so that the rubber does not come off the part at the back. Uh, I find that some vehicles, if you just pick off the dust boot and it comes off the back, it's very, very hard to get it back on. So if you can get your finger in there, you can hold it on and you don't have to worry about it completely coming off. Then you take your fingers and you pinch the boot and kind of pull it off until you can see inside like this, right? And you can see it's dry in there. There's no fluid coming out, so that is a good seal. So now you use your fingers and pinch it and put it back in place and make sure that it's not gonna fall off. And the back was already on because I held it with my finger. And then all you do is you do the same thing on the other side. A couple other things I check while we're in here is I look at all the springs and linkages and levers and clips, see if any's got really, really heavy rust, like it's 30, 40 years old and should be replaced. Are any missing? Are any loose? Maybe even fallen off and sitting in the drum? Uh, take a look for that. The other thing I check for is any kind of leaks, uh, brake fluid leaks that I haven't spotted from maybe the connection for the brake line, things like that. 
The last thing I check is this rubber flex line here. Remember this wheel has to go up and down constantly, so we can't have a solid steel tube bringing our brake fluid here, otherwise it would just bend back and forth until it broke. So every corner of the car is gonna have this rubber flex line so that it can move and flex and not have any issues. So when we're checking these, we are checking to see that they are still rubber and pliable. There's no cracks in them, there's no bulges, and no leaks at any of the connections. You can also get a view at some of the brake line here, the steel brake line, make sure that it's not rusting and leaking as well. Now that we have set this drum brake caliper to the inside diameter of our drum, we have also set this to the exact size diameter. So now if we throw this over our brake shoes themselves, we can see what kind of clearance there is between the brake shoes and the drum when this is rolling down the road when we're off the brakes. And we are ultimately shooting for about one mil clearance. So what you do is you put this side right against the brake shoe, and then this side will show you the clearance between the two. And what we're looking for is about one millimeter clearance if this is adjusted right. Now make sure you go to the fullest diameter here, and it's about one millimeter, so that'll be good. Now, if it was not one millimeter, you'd have to adjust these, and I will do that in a future video where I show you how to service this. Now that we've written down our measurements on the rear drum, I went ahead and wrote down the specifications for the wear limits for the brake shoes themselves, for the friction material, and for the drum. So next step is to figure out whether these need to be done right now or take a guesstimation of when they need to be replaced. So both sides are even at three, wear limits two. We have about a millimeter left there. Now it doesn't seem like that much, but you gotta remember the rear brakes only does about 10 or 20% of the braking total. So you'll be changing the front pads a couple times at least before you do the rears. So really, I think this could probably be at least six months to maybe even a year, depending how the person drives, how much they drive. And uh, we can always come back for an oil change in six months and take a look at that again. Now for the drums themselves, there is a millimeter. And remember the steel drum isn't as fast of a wear component. So there's lots of material there as well. So like I said, I would say, tell this person to come back in six months and we'll reassess whether they need to do their shoes then. All right, before we put the drum back on, remember we might've had a hard time taking this off because the centering hole on this hub is rusted together. So since you have it off, let's take a wire brush. We'll clean the area around there, get rid of all the dirt and rust. And then we'll put a very thin coat of anti-seize on there. So that way when this needs to come apart, it will have no problems. Now, special note, do not put any anti-seize on your studs for your lug nuts. They are torque spec for dry, meaning you do not have any of this on there. And if you got any greasy fingerprints on the inside here, you're gonna wanna get some brake cleaner. Make sure you got your safety glasses on and give it a good clean. Once you've torqued up your wheel lug nuts to the proper spec, remember the parking brake is still on, so we should not be able to spin this. That is ensuring that the parking brake is working on this side. Because there's two separate cables, I would do the check on the other side as well, and then disengage or take off your parking brake, and then both wheels should spin. And then that is the end of our inspection. It's a wrap on another video from Way the Wrench, this time on how to inspect drum brakes. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and were able to get something out of it so that you can go out and inspect your drum brakes and save a ton of money. Uh, if you haven't already, why don't you follow us on Instagram that we can get all the behind the scenes stuff that's going on in the shop before videos come out. And until next time, take it easy.